Ah, boy, Ravens, y'all have some fun editing that Deshaun Elliott presser. Anyway, YouTube, team keep it clean, because Deshaun Elliott... <laughs> If we ever have him on here, we will not be able to do a live stream. Cause that dude, he was just letting them fly. And then the, what made what made it just what made it so significant was that he said, "Oh, excuse my language." Then let it go. Then he let it go out, so he knew what he was doing. But anyway, <laughs> team, keep it clean. Hope y'all Tuesday is going really, really good. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Um, this has just been a fun week so far, and it's, it's only the beginning of Tuesday. It's only Tuesday morning. I don't even think it's 12 yet, man. No, it's 11.25. Well, by the time you see this, because of my internet, you probably won't see it till like 12. But anyway, let's get into it. So, today, uh, the Ravens, they had Chris Hewitt, uh, who I believe is the defensive backs coach. He spoke, Gus Edwards spoke, Deshaun Elliott spoke, and I believe it's the offensive line coach. I cannot remember his name, but he was like that cool uncle, um, but he spoke as well. And they did him dirty at first because they had him looking, they had him looking like this. He was over there talking to the camera like this. And I was like, hold up, is he, is he that short or is it just a bad angle? So then they ended up fixing it. And I was like, okay, whew, much better. Um, but yeah, man, today was a, it was fun listening to those guys. Deshaun Elliott, when he spoke, um, he said that uh, he wanted to be more of a leader. He wanted to step it up, take it up a notch. And something that somebody pointed out to me, which should make a very big difference uh, this year for Deshaun Elliott. Um, they pointed out that this is going to be his first year, his first training camp as a starting safety. Now, I know some people are going to be like, well, wait a minute. Last year, he was a starting safety, duh, going into the offseason because the Ravens cut Earl Thomas, duh. But they didn't have no training camp. They didn't have a training camp. So now this year, he has that year of experience. And something else that was significant that he talked about, too, he talked about how last year he said he felt like he couldn't do everything that he wanted to because of the injury that he had the previous year. So with him having that injury, you, you know, when, when they come back from injury, it's, it can be a mental thing just as much as physical. Because while your, your body is healing, wherever your injury occurs at, the mental part, that's just as tough, if not tougher. And I know even my guy, uh, Kev, when he de dealt with his ACL, he said that the, the mental part was just as tough as, as the, uh, the physical part. So the recovery is, is a, it's a multitude of layers of the process, man. It, it's crazy. So shout out to Deshaun Elliott because he sounds like he's mentally past the injury now. So um, he talked about Brandon Stevens uh, and how he, he couldn't even believe when the Ravens drafted him. He said, because that's one of his guys. And he said, Brandon Stevens is pretty quiet, but he's trying to get him to be more vocal. But he said, he knows he can ball. He knows he can play. And we'll see how things work out. I ain't going to speak on that yet. But anyway, um, so I just, I, I'll talk about that another time, what I was going to say. But with uh, Deshaun Elliott, they asked him because it is a very, very good question because the Ravens have several safeties in the same exact situation. They said, Deshaun Elliott, you're going into the final year of your contract. You're going into the final year of your contract. How are you feeling about that? He said, I ain't worried about the money. The money will come. I just love football. I love football. The money will come. Uh, and he said, the, I, I'm, all I'm worried about is the Super Bowl right now. That's it. And, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you get the Super Bowl. I mean, you're going to get your money regardless. But you get a Super Bowl on top of that. Oh, you get even more money because you get the money for the playoff games. Go get your money, Deshaun. Get the Super Bowl and get your money. You can go for both. Um, but shout out to Deshaun Elliott. Now, um, Gus Edwards spoke. Uh, and he just reiterated some different things, said he wants to be more involved uh, in the passing game, um, wants to be more of a receiving back. He said one of his goals is to hit uh, a 1,000 yards rushing. Um, so I'm like, okay, Gus, yeah, you. I mean, you could definitely hit those goals. You already know what time it is. And Ravens, they gave you a contract already, so they ain't got to try to keep your production down. But anyway, so the big news in today's practice was that uh, – Another injury to Rashad Bateman. And this is something that we've been speaking about um, in, 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 di in different videos. And we just we, we still hope that it's not this is not a reoccurring thing because Rashad Bateman has had several several minor injuries uh, throughout practice, training camp, all that so far. 
um, but we, we hope that they remain minor. Um, they said that he got sort of tangled up. He came down uh, wrong. I, I'm not sure if it was with Khalil Dorsey or Marcus Peters. I forgot who it was with, but Rashad Bateman, he came down wrong. He said They said he got up limping, and they said he went back uh, to the locker room with a trainer. Now, the, that part, that worried me a bit, but I was like, uh, we'll, we'll see. And uh, Jeff Zrebic said Marcus Peters had to help him to the sideline. That part got me a little bit worried. But then what really got me worried was when they said that Eric DaCosta ran back to the locker room with him. And when I saw, I forgot which reporter reported that. Maybe it was Jeff Zrebic, but that part worried me a bit. Because Eric DaCosta has been around football for a very, very long time. So... He knows his stuff. Uh, he knows what stuff looks like. He knows when something is significant. He knows when it's not. And now him taking over as the GM from Ozzy Newsom, uh, he has definitely uh, put in some work. But with putting in that work, again, you gain a lot of knowledge and experience. So I did, and, and y'all let me know if, if y'all have ever heard this before, because I haven't. And if we have, then I sure don't remember. But this was the first time I had heard of Eric DaCosta actually running back with a player to the locker room when they get injured. So, again, not trying to make it worse than what it is, because hopefully it's just it's nothing. Hopefully we, we get off with this one the same way we got off with Jimmy Smith, to where it's not a long-term thing. The same way we got off with... Um, with Zeitler and Bradley Bozeman and Hollywood and Boykin, where it shouldn't be long-term things, but they should be back relatively soon. Um, but it just, that worried me a little bit, uh, hearing that part of it, with Eric DaCosta running back there. Because, yeah, that's, that's your first-round pick wide receiver. Y'all obviously got big plans for him. He's been doing his thing so far when he is out there on the field. But now you um you missing Rashad Bateman, you missing still missing Deion Kane, you're still missing Hollywood, you're still missing Miles Boykin. You're missing some significant guys. You are missing some significant guys at the wide receiver position. So they did just uh sign the receiver uh yesterday. I forget his name. I know it starts with an S. His first name starts with an S and his last name starts with an M. Uh, but my apologies, I cannot remember his name off the top of my head. And of course they, they waved Jacob Breland to make room for him. Uh, but it's is this is this is rough. And it was what's crazy about it too is that the the one receiver out of everybody, out of everybody who has the most injury history, he's the last man standing right now. Well, not the last man standing, but Sammy Watkins. He's been just fine. So, shout out to Sammy Watkins. But again, this will give even more opportunity to James Prochet. Even more opportunity to Devin Duvernay. Even more opportunity to Tylen Wallace. Shout out, Nana. I ain't forget about him. I ain't forget about Tylen now. But, um... We'll just see how everything develops. I I would think that we would have an update on Rashad Bateman uh, between today and certainly by the, tomorrow at the latest, but probably something by later today. So once we find out, I'll let y'all know, and I certainly let know y'all will let <laughs> me know. Um, but I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. Again, I appreciate you, and you have a really, really great Tuesday. I'm, I'm sure I'll be seeing y'all later on. We out.